Welcome to the October 21st edition of the Muskie Daily. Today we'll be taking an in-depth look at two local charities the College Drive Presbyterian Church started. Marty Kurtz will give us an insight to of how Lots of Love was started through the food pantry. And Reverend Ann Weirich explains her favorite part of Loads of Love. All that and more here on the Muskie Daily. Thank you for joining us here on the Muskie Daily. I'm Ashley Glazer. And I'm Chris Morgan. Today on the Muskie Daily, we'll first take a look at a local student donating for a person with leukemia. A Muskingum University student recently helped save the life of a stranger suffering from acute lymphoblastic leukemia in Columbus. Senior Chase Myers signed up to donate stem cells last year despite having a less than 1% chance of finding a match. He was in for a surprise when he got a call over the summer informing him of that match. I got a call in July telling me that I'd matched and there was just this realization over the summer that I just, I fought a lot with this idea that to me, the guy that I was donating to was just one in a million. He was another person. Um, but for him, I was his one chance of hope. I was his one chance of getting out of this. And so that meant a lot to me and so that I felt like I had to go through with it. Myers will be contacted 45 days after the donation to receive an update on the patient's condition. Last month, there was a Good Neighbor meeting in New Concord to educate college students about living off campus and how to keep their neighbors in mind. New Concord Village Administrator Charlotte Colley explains how students must learn to be courteous to their neighbors in New Concord. Even though they are a college student or a university student, that they are living in the community of New Concord and that they have neighbors who may not have the typical university hours. The Village Hall also hopes to continue to host these Good Neighbor meetings to educate students about living in off-campus houses and keeping good relations with their neighbors. Orbit Media News correspondent Marty Kurtz has more on two of New Concord's charities and how one came about with the help of the other. College at Presbyterian Church Food Pantry in New Concord has been going strong for 10 years. But last May, they decided to reach out more and start a program called Loads of Love. College at Presbyterian Church, along with E&K Car Wash and Laundromat, teamed up to create a program that will give discounts to people who signed up. The church will sign people up for the first four Wednesdays of every month from 4.30 to 7.30. Certain laundry machines will be discounted. Reverend of the College Yard Presbyterian Church, Ann Weirich, explains that Loads of Love allows church members to spend time with the families participating in the charity. The thing that has been so incredible to me about it is that we've really gotten to know each other. You know, when folks just come in and get their groceries, there's a chance to talk sometimes if it's not too busy. But most of the time, when you're sitting around waiting for your laundry, there's plenty of time to talk. So we share each other's stories. And what we've found is that there are other ways that we can be helpful. Stores throughout New Concord are adopting weeks to host the laundromat. For Orbit Media News, I'm Marty Kurtz. Homecoming week is here, which means there's lots of activities happening on campus this weekend. Friday, October 23rd, there will be a library dedication starting at 4 p.m. at the Roberta A. Smith Library. University Review will begin at 8.30 that night in the John Glenn Gym. On Saturday, there will be a fun run starting at 8 in the morning on East Long, followed by lunch at 10.30. The homecoming parade will begin at noon on Lakeside and Stadium Drive. The football march against, match against Ohio Northern will be held at 1.30 at McConaughey Stadium, the college concert will be held at 7 p.m. in Brown Chapel. There will be a women's soccer game against Ohio Northern at 7 p.m. And MU After Dark will begin at 9 in the, gym, in the John Glenn Gym. We'll, take, we'll be taking a short break, but don't go away because when we come back, we'll take a look at into being back in the future day. That and more when we return on the Muskie Daily. This is Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. Find out what decisions are being made at Student 
Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. series of social media hoaxes, the real Back to the Future Day has finally arrived. Back to the Future Part 2, shot and released in 1989, sees Marty McFly travel to October 21st, 2015 to save his children. Frank Pallet reports. Sci-fi films have always laid out a vision of the future that could be, giving us a glimpse of technology that's just over the horizon. But for the last 25 years, gadget heads have been waiting on a very specific tomorrow the futuristic landscape of Hill Valley in Back to the Future Part 2. I need to you. Hoverboard. It wasn't just the hoverboards and flying cars that captured our imagination. It was that Back to the Future promised us a date when all this stuff would be real. That date is today, October 21st, 2015. 2015? And one thing the filmmakers definitely got right about the future, product placement would be just as big in 2015 as it was in the 80s. When they were looking for brands in the original Back to the Future yep. in 85, they wanted a juxtaposition between 1955 and 1985. So they only looked at brands that had changed their logo. Wow. Pepsi was one of those brands. Texaco was another one of those yep. brands. So now the future is today, and big brands are using Back to the Future Day to bring futuristic products dreamed up by the movie into reality. Pepsi gave away bottles of Pepsi Perfect to hordes of Marty McFly wannabes at this year's New York Comic Con. Everybody in the room, get Nike is working on self-lacing sneakers. Those hoverboards aren't just the stuff of science fiction, and Toyota sells a car that runs on renewable fuel, just like Doc's DeLorean. I need fuel. Why do you think these brands are creating all of these products? It might be the other way around, that, that Doc Brown yeah. and the writers of Back to the Future came up with the, these ideas, and various companies have developed them for commercial use. So did Back to the Future change the future? or just predicted. Either way, fans are clamoring for the products hitting shelves on October 21st. And Back in Time, a documentary about the franchise is touring across America. We saw that the Back to the Future world wanted to see this film because they put their money behind it. Over two Kickstarter campaigns, $200,000 to make this film, and we spent every dollar of it. Back to the Future is 30 years old this year, the original 1985's Back to the Future. Why has it been so beloved all of these years? Well, I was, I was just watching it last night. It, it has a lot of charm. Time travel is a fantasy we all have. So it, the, the Back to the Future series really exploits that, wish that yeah. wish that we all have. Until then, any dreams of a real flying DeLorean are planted firmly on the road. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Frank Pilata, CNN Money, New York. It's a surprising week in Washington with two leaders announcing decisions that would reshape the political landscape. Vice President Joe Biden said he is not going to seek the Democratic nomination for president. On Capitol Hill, Representative Paul Ryan announced he is willing to run in next week's election to select the new House Speaker. Polo Sandoval reports on, last, on the latest developments in the nation's capital. Unfortunately. I believe we're out of time, the time necessary to mount a winning campaign for the nomination. The vice president took to the White House Rose Garden, sharing what was perhaps the most <clears throat> awaited decision in Washington. The window for a Biden bid for president has closed. Flanked by his wife and President Obama, Vice President Biden promised he won't stay silent leading up to next year's presidential election. We intend to spend the next 15 months fighting for what we've always cared about. I am absolutely certain we are fully capable of accomplishing extraordinary things. The vice president's decision not to run is only the latest highly anticipated announcement out of Washington this week. Outgoing House Speaker John Boehner scheduled to vote next week to elect a successor, ending weeks of leadership limbo on Capitol Hill. The conference election uh, for speaker will be next Wednesday, and uh, the 28th, and on Thursday, the 29th, uh, the election will occur on the floor. Wisconsin Congressman Paul Ryan finally agreed to run as long as some conditions are met, including full support from his party and a schedule that doesn't interfere with his family time. I have left this decision in their hands. And should they agree with these requests, then I am happy and I am willing to get to work.
These key decisions from both Biden and Ryan could provide some stability in a political season that's already proven to be full of surprises. Reporting in Washington, I'm Polo Sandoval. Back on the Muskie Daily. Stay tuned because when we return, Chris will have your local weather update. We have the music. We have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. On the story. On the quad. On the scene. This is the Musky Daily. Tonight's forecast is looking mostly cloudy with a low of 52. Tomorrow will be mostly cloudy again with a chance of showers and a high of 70. Tomorrow night will still be mostly cloudy with a chance of showers continuing and a low of 43. Now take a look at your extended forecast and after that stay tuned for your Muskie Sports update. Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. Find out what decisions are being made at Student Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening, and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. The Muskie volleyball team vaulted their way into a tie for third place in the Ohio Athletic Conference Tuesday night by defeating Mount Union at home 3-1. Taylor Fothery led the Muskie attack with 19 kills on the night, while Deja Prince aided the defense with 26 digs. The win puts the Muskies at 18-8 overall and 4-2 in the OAC, tied with Baldwin Wallace. The Yellow Jackets have the head-to-head -head tiebreaker over the Muskies, so the ladies will have to keep winning to move up and hope for a little help starting with their matchup against second place Ohio Northern on the road on Saturday. Men's soccer got their first overtime and OAC wins of the season Tuesday by defeating Mount Union 2-1 in the second overtime period at home on Muskie Field. The game winner came by way of Chase Michael Hilliard in the 102nd minute of the match when he chipped it over the Purple Raider keeper for the goal. With the win, the Muskies improve to 4-11 and overall on the year and 1-5 and in the conference. The men will be back in action on Saturday when they go to Ada for a date with Ohio Northern. We're going to take a short break here on the Muskie Daily, but when we come back, we'll have more news coming your way, only on the orbit. This is Will Mullins, and I want to encourage you to watch Chapel on Orbit TV Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at 5 p.m. and 10 p.m. Thanks. Find out what decisions are being made at Student Senate that could affect your campus organization by tuning into Orbit TV on Tuesdays at 11 in the evening, and again on Wednesday through Sunday at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. That's all for now on the Muskie Daily. For more information on local news from tonight, read this week's copy of the Black and Magenta. You can also keep up to date by visiting orbitmediaonline.com. Good night, New Concord.